वेलकम वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल फैक्ट्स इन बायोलॉजी माय सेल्फ प्रोफेसर आनंद जोशी फ्रॉम एम एस जी कॉलेज मालेगाव कैम फ्रेंड्स वी आर प्रिपेरिंग फॉर द नीट एग्जाम एज वेल एज द सी ई टी एंड स्टेट बोर्ड सिलेबस एग्जाम एंड फॉर दैट एग्जामिनेशन कंटिन्यूसली यू हैव टू रिक्वायर द अपडेटेशन एंड द इंफॉर्मेशन data and all the content of syllabus of various boards that include cbsc ncert as well as the state board syllabus and for that purpose i am providing you with all the in depth information and teaching that will definitely help you for your preparation friends if you find my videos helpful for your preparation of neat and state board syllabus please do subscribe like and share my youtube channel anand joshi biology facts in biology actually today we are going to discuss a very important topic in angiosperm and that is nothing but the seed and fruit development friends as we know after fertilization ovule it will contain the diploid zygote and triploid pain and respectively the zygote it is getting de developed into a multicellular structure called as embryo the forerunner of the future plant and the endosperm that is a nutritive tissue so obviously we have to study the enclosures for these two very important structures and that is in the form of seed and fruit so let's continue with the development of seed and fruit actually if we see the process of seed development it is actually the goal of reproduction for every angiospermic plant or in another word we can say organism to create the offspring for continuation of race for continuation of their genes for continuation of their existence reproduction is very important and one of the major way of reproduction in plant it is nothing but the production of offspring by formation of seeds that are enclosed within the fruit now we know the flowers they must be pollinated in order to produce seeds and fruit because through pollination the male gametes are transferred to the female gamete and then only fertilization and after fertilization only the development of seed fruit embryo and endosperm is possible so it is must for a flower to get pollinated before successful sexual reproduction actually if we see the process of seed formation we know the structure of ovule and this ovule which was containing the central tissue parenchymatous tissue that is nucellus and which is surrounded by a covering and that covering in the form of integuments now these integuments we know either they are one that is unitegmic two that is bitegmic and three that is tritegmic ovules are there but the most common angiospermic ovule they are always bitegmic now these integuments of the ovule once the fertilization is completed they are converted to seed coat or they are called as testa in mature seed they are called as testa or they are called as seed coat now these are seed coat sometime they can be converted or they can be distinguished into two layers and when they are distinguished into two layer the testa that is the outer one and it is hard many time it is waterproof and inner one tegmen that is soft and cushion like so testa and tegmen these are representing the two integumental layer that are converted to seed coat or we can say they are forming the outer covering of the seed the new cells in the ovule may persist in some genera of angiosperm like black paper or even beet as a thin a very thin structure or layer that is called as perisperm now this perisperm it is a representation of earlier generation earlier gametophytic generation in the form of perisperm in other seeds or some other genera the food reserve in the endosperm are partially used up during the development of embryo obviously in such seed 
the endosperm remain conspicuous or very little amount and fills a greater part of the seed thus the resultant seed the mature seed will contain little amount or plus or more or more amount of the endosperm at maturity and as a result of that these seeds are said to be the endospermic seed or albuminous seed it these are called as albuminous because many a time the endosperm contain the albumin protein and that's why they are said to be the albuminous seed the most common example are castor coconut maize these are the common plant where endosperm is persistent in little or more amount but in that condition the seed will contain the mature seed will contain endosperm so that's why they are called as endospermic or they are called as albuminous seeds in other one where the seeds embryo absorb food material from the seed and the entire endosperm is used up and when entire endosperm is used up the mature seed fully developed seed they do not contain endosperm or that endosperm is completely consumed by them as a result such seeds are said to be the non endospermic or they are called as ex albuminous seeds as the mature seed do not contain endosperm the most common example we can have pea plants are there beans are there or most of the dicotyledonic plants they will contain non endospermic or ex albuminous seeds now as dicot embryos or dicot seed they do not contain the endosperm they are called as non endospermic or they are even we can say ex albuminous said to be now in case of such situation it is observed that many a time that seed it will not contain the endosperm and the developing embryo it will receive the food material nutrition from the cotyledon themselves here the cotyledons are acting as nutritive material and in some seeds these non endospermic seed that cotyledon is consumed during the development of embryo and in fact these cotyledon they are also forming the first photosynthetic organs of seeds or the plant now in the seed the micropyle is persistent as it is a small pore at the apical end of the seed and it will allow entry of water as well as oxygen during the process of germination because during germination the seed soak the water and respiratory gases through micropyle only now this is the story of seed as far as fruits are concerned the fruits are or the development of fruit is triggered only after the development of certain type of hormones within the maturing ovary as a result of that the small inconspicuous ovary it grows rapidly undergo biochemical changes physiological changes to form a larger structure said to be the fruit now if we see the fruits the development of fruit it is actually a post fertilization process and once the fertilization process we all know zygote is converted to embryo and embryo is enclosed within ovule ovule is converted to seed now that small ovary it begins to differentiate into fruit and ovary wall mind it well the ovary wall will be converted to what we call it as an pericarp peri that is periphery and carp that is carpel so peripheral part of the carpel it is converted to what we call it as an fruit now if we see in case of this fruit the pericarp is very special structure and this special, special structure it may get differentiated into even two or three layers now particularly in this diagram you can see the endocarp is there mesocarp is there or even uh, we can say ectocarp is there now in case of fruits like mango coconut they can be differentiated and many a time they are fleshy many a times they are dry depending upon the requirement of that plant they may be fleshy or they may be dry now if we see the further development it will be the significance of seed and fruit formation now it is very important to understand the significance of these particular processes of formation of seed and fruit in angiosperm because they are playing major role in the evolution of angiosperm now if we see the significance some of them we are going to enlist here the first thing the fruits that provide nourishment for developing seeds because they will contain the parenchyma tissue that can be very easily digested and made available for the development of embryo or we can say the seeds secondly the fruit protect the seeds in 
immature condition because they are forming outer covering outer protective covering wall so that the seeds can be protected in immature condition now seeds they are serving as an important propagation organ or unit of the plant only through them the next generation can come into the existence so these are said to be the propogule natural propogules the seeds are referred then the seeds and the fruit they develop special devices for their dispersal and thus help in the distribution of species now that is very important concept again for need purpose because production of seed is not sufficient to make the reproduction successful it is obviously the dispersal of seed to distant parts distant location and from the point of formation from the point of production the seeds must be carried to different places where they can grow into the new plant then and then only the conquest of land conquering of land is possible for the seed bearing plant and for that purpose they have developed definitely a variety of we can say mechanism for seed dispersal now if we see the seed they are characterized by presence of a state physiological state that is called as dormancy and this dormancy is a state of metabolic arrest during which metabolic activities are highly reduced that facilitate the survival of organism or embryo particularly during the adverse environmental condition when the environmental conditions are not suitable for germination and production of new plants then structure and physiological adaptive mechanism are shown by the seed for survival and these structural physiological biochemical mechanism collectively they are referred as dormancy then if we see the mature and viable seeds they will not germinate even when the favorable conditions are there even in presence of favorable condition many times seeds do not germinate and this is why because they have to provide sufficient amount of time duration for the completion of development of embryo within the seed and once the development is completed the embryo has completed the resting period then only the germination process can be facilitated and in this entire mechanism number of plant hormones are playing important role in the physiology of seed as well as fruit friends this is the story of formation development of seed and fruit in angiosperm if you find these videos helpful for your preparation please subscribe like share and comment on my YouTube channel that is facts in biology Anand Joshi biology thank you thank you very much